Quick maths problem for you. If it takes three workers 10 hours to dig a hole, how many hours would the same size hole take six workers to dig? Twice the manpower equals half the time, right? Five hours, easy. So easy, in fact, that it's difficult to imagine ever not being true. But in reality, this is a dangerous trap to fall into because not every problem can be divided up and solved this way. And this is especially true in large projects. In 1975, software engineer Frederick P. Brooks published an essay entitled The Mythical Man Month, in which he states that adding human resources to a late software project makes it later. This has since come to be known as Brooks' Law. And while he did describe this as an outrageous oversimplification, it's a good guiding principle. It reminds us that the digging a hole analogy doesn't always work, as it's based on the flawed assumption that any person working for one month will consistently achieve the same amount. But it works sometimes, right? So how can you tell the difference? Well, first, I can guarantee it doesn't work more often than it does. How true it is for your individual project will ultimately come down to a combination of things. The first being the project's development stage. Brooks' law refers to late running projects, and it gets more and more relevant the later a project gets. But while additional workers added to a project early enough might be able to complete it in less time, ultimately success depends on a myriad of factors. So it's rarely something that can be relied on. The next thing to consider is the nature and complexity of the project. To quote the man himself, men and months are interchangeable commodities only when a task can be partitioned among many workers with no communication among them. What this means is that if you're digging a hole, sure, adding more bodies will speed things up. But if your task is any more complicated than that, then adding people is just going to make things worse because every team member added brings new complications. The first of these is, as Brooks calls it, partitioning of work. Some tasks just don't divide up, and some simply need more time to be done properly. Nine women can't have a baby in one month. There's no dividing that workload. It's going to take as long as it takes. The second is communication. As a team gets larger, communication gets exponentially more complicated. The easiest way to demonstrate this is to imagine toasting with wine glasses at a party. In a small group of people, everyone can easily clink glasses with everyone else. But in a larger group, people only touch glasses with those near them. Which is not to say it's impossible for everyone to cheers everyone, it's just going to slow things down. A lot. And that's exactly what happens when teams grow in size. As well as all of this, any new team member being added to a project will result in a ramp up time, a period where they familiarize themselves with what's come before them and their role within the project before they eventually start to become productive. So you can see that in reality, this is a lot more complicated than more workers dig faster. And that is the problem with the idea of the mythical man month. But if we zoom out a bit, what we're really talking about here is the difference between theory and practice. How your project appears planned out in a spreadsheet versus the reality of delivering it. And forgetting that difference exists is the cardinal sin of project management. Because your project isn't happening in a spreadsheet, it's happening in the real world, being executed by a team of human beings who work in different ways, in different environments, at different rates. And the speed, volume, and crucially, quality of their work is subject to numerous factors that are only partially related to how many hours they're on the clock. If your project is late and you're staring down the barrel of a deadline, it's tempting to pull out all the stops and have people working every available hour. But honestly, if you think that someone working 24 hours straight mainlining coffee while a deadline hangs over their head will produce the same standard of output as a person working 24 hours over three days with time to relax, refresh, and sleep, you don't know how humans work. When we organize, allocate, and justify the time and money spent on projects, it's easy to only ever think within that logical framework where human inconsistency can't be quantified. But when doing complex work, this inconsistency isn't a weakness. It's a strength, one that when embraced can enable our best work. This feels counterintuitive, but actually it's a great example of how in theory, practice and theory are the same, but in practice, they are not.